Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. I've long toyed with the idea of having sort of a home assistant kiosk, but for various reasons I've procrastinated and I've put it off. But Elicro did reach out to me and asked if I wanted to review some of their products and this felt like the perfect opportunity to go ahead and do that. So Elicro, full disclosure, did send me the devices we're looking at today. It's a Raspberry Pi 5 with a Pi hat, which everybody knows, but they also sent me two of their touchscreen IPS displays. Now for this video, no money has changed hands. They have no control over the narrative. They just want to send me these devices to have a look at on my channel. Now, as always, I will remain impartial. I'll give you the warts and all of what I experienced during this process. TLDR, these products seem to be decent. They do exactly what they said on the tin and I've not had any problems with using them. Anyway, let's get into this video now. I'm gonna give you an overview of what was sent to me and I'm also gonna talk you through the process of how I set this up. The reason I wanna set this up is because not everyone's a cool nerd like me in the family and they want something simple that they don't need a phone, they don't need to open up their laptop to control things like the light and the heating, etc. through Home Assistant. Hopefully what this will do is provide something simple on screen, something that can be maybe placed on the corner of a worktop, for example, and it will give the family access to things like the CCTV, controlling the lights, the heating, all of that sort of stuff. The irony being, it basically is a computer that's always on, just it's extremely low powered and specifically designed for this task. Anyway, let's get into the hardware overview and then we'll jump into the configuration. So first up, we have the Raspberry Pi 5. Now this is the 16 gigabyte model, but you wouldn't need that for this operation. Paired with that is the Pi hat. This is the official Pi 5 hat. The reason I wanted that was because I also wanted to test out adding an NVMe drive to this. Again, not required for this build, but something I might use later on when I'm using the Pi. The first screen we see here is the Crowvision 11.6 inch IPS capacitive. This is designed for the Pi 4 and Pi 5. I actually find that the Pi 5 with the hat on doesn't actually fit on the back and you've also got some connectivity issues which I'll discuss later. The other one we're looking at here is their 7 inch and this actually has some ESP32 modules built into the back of this. And what makes that interesting is because you can actually use that to power some devices. So whilst you've already got the Pi, you can actually use the screen for some of your IoT devices, some of your sensors, etc. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I will come on to that in a later one. Now on the back of the screen I'm going to be using here, the 11.6, you can see the breakout board on the back and conveniently it also has those two sliders. So no matter which board you're using, you can basically configure it how you want. That gives you flexibility in terms of if you're using a different size board or need a different size orientation, you can do that by moving those sliders. Now as I alluded to earlier, the connections for the Raspberry Pi 5 didn't want to plug in for me. I actually had to plug things externally as I'll show in the future and it'd be nice maybe if they updated the board or maybe I need to go reread the instructions but I couldn't actually power the device using it. I needed to use an external power supply. Now for this build I'm going to be using the GPIO pins here to add the hat on top. The process of installing the hat was really straightforward. Just needed to put those spacers on first once you've done that, you can put the hat on top and then connect the ribbon cable and then it's a case of just screwing it down. Now again, this did present a difficulty when adding the M.2 drive and the hat because it wouldn't actually fit onto the back of the Pi 5. So maybe there are some longer threaded screws which would make that possible, but with the standard setup that I got, it didn't work. So you will have to think out that problem if you want to go with this setup using that screen. Here you can see I've got the M.2 plugged in now. It's obviously longer than the one that's intended for, but should be fine just for this testing purpose. I'd probably get a shorter one for anything longer term, but again, probably not needed for this setup. So now with the screen on the supplied stand, I'm gonna connect this to the board on the back. Again, because I'm using that hat, I can't actually screw it down onto the back of here. But if you weren't using the hat and you're using a four, everything could be powered and also connected securely to the back of the screen. And then you could mount this anywhere you wanted. So here's the problem I had with that hat on. We can't actually screw in, but hopefully with some longer screws, I would be able to attach that onto the back. You also get some supplied USB connections. So the USB here will actually connect the input. So for the screen touch to work with the Raspberry Pi, there's also a power as well, but that isn't powerful enough for the Pi 5, especially if you're gonna be using something like a USB port. So with my Frankenstein up and running, as you can see here, it's time to get into the boot process, get this thing up and running, and let's just sort of see what happens. As I said here, I can't actually power that through the USB. I've got to do all that externally because it's not powerful enough. 
So upon that first boot, hopefully we get some power. You can see it's reading the USB stick and I had no issues with it displaying straight away the installation process. So with the assembly out of the way, it's time to choose the operating system. And there are a few choices. Basically anything Linux and supports ARM is gonna run on this. I decided to take any of the headaches away and I'm gonna run the official Raspberry Pi OS. Might change that in the future, but for now I really just wanted a proof of concept. So the three options traditionally are the ones with the desktop, one with the desktop and recommended software, and then the light. Now, because I'm gonna need a desktop output, the OS Lite is just a command line interface. We don't wanna be using that. And of the two, the desktop and the recommended software, I'm probably just gonna go with the default desktop. It's a smaller image side, should have less overhead on the machine itself. And anything I want to add additionally, I can just do that manually afterwards. Now, one thing that's awesome with the Raspberry Pi is the fact that it has a bootloader built into the Pi itself. So just simply stick an RJ45 cable in there, enter the bootloader, and then you can go through the image process like you would on your desktop. So you pull down the image, you choose your drive, and then you're off to the races. I can't believe how awesome this is and I wish PCs had something similar. You could obviously do a network boot if you wanted to, but as you can see on screen, this process was flawless for me and the touch screen just worked off the bat. No configuration was needed. And within a couple of minutes, everything was up and running and I was ready to move on to the next part of the process, which was to actually access my home assistant using the touch screen for the first time. And then we just need to figure out how to set up kiosk mode, which thanks to an open source project, we can do. Now as a quick test to see how this will work, I loaded up Firefox, I hit the full screen mode, I navigated to my home assistant and logged in. And this is effectively the user experience that I and my family are gonna have. Now this obviously doesn't survive a reboot, so we need to fix that by coming up with a kiosk mode, whereby whenever the device starts, it automatically logs into the home assistant page and we get what we see on screen. Now for that, I have found a pretty cool open source project and that's what I'm gonna be deploying on this to test it out. I will report back in the future how that pans out, but if you do have any alternatives as well, please do drop a comment below, really keen to test it out. So after enabling VNC and SSH access to the Raspberry Pi, I'm now ready to connect to it and hopefully deploy this script and then we should see it in action. So the first thing we wanna do is to actually remote into the Pi. So that should be as simple as just a standard SSH connection. Now that we're connected, we're ready to run this command here. Remember it says not to run it as a root user, so just a local user. So let's paste that in and let's hit return and let's see what happens. Hopefully by the end of this, we get a good to go and we should be able to now configure this and access it through kiosk mode. Now I'm gonna start the setup process for this. The web URL for my instance is ha.jimsgarage.co.uk. Gonna obviously leave it in dark mode. I'm gonna leave the zoom as is, I'm not sure what that looks like yet. I'll leave the default for the web widget to be enabled. And then we get the option to connect to an MQTT broker. I'm not gonna do that at the moment because I just want to access the existing home assistant I've got up and running, which is already connected to my MQTT broker. Basically, if the display that you have, so something like the other display, that seven inch I've got with the ESP32s, I could connect this as a device to that and get the benefit of any additional sensors I've added to that. So I'm just gonna click no for now. And now hopefully we should be able to go and access this. So I'm gonna go over now to the display and let's see what it shows on screen. So now after using this for a couple of days, I'm happy to report that everything is as expected both the kiosk that I'm using, the open source project, but more importantly, the screens and the Raspberry Pi, that all seems to be working fine. So thanks to Elecro for sending me these devices. However, I do wish that it was updated somewhat for the Pi 5, especially because it would be great to have an all-in-one where I can power the Pi 5 off the screen as you can with the Pi 4. Appreciate the powers are different, but you should update that to the latest version. Other than that though, these devices seem great and I'm happy to sort of recommend them based upon my experiences. I will be playing a bit more with the 7 and the built-in ESP32 devices. That could create a great all-in-one sort of 
home hub whereby you could put a number of sensors into this kiosk as well that would directly connect into your MQTT sensors itself. So stay tuned for that and we'll be updating this in the future. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and also let me know your experiences about setting up home kiosks and how you're going about it. I know a lot of people are using sort of old mobile phones or potentially something like an Android tablet. Those are other options that I did look into. Anyway, as always, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.